This Florence Crown sewing machine was made by the same Florence company that produced the highly collectible Florence sewing machines. While this crown features a more modern body shape and improved mechanical design, its vibrating shuttle, while it works great, is a step back from the advanced rotating bobbin of the original Florence. Crowns were made from 1880, or perhaps late 1879, to 1883, when they were replaced with a more improved version. The infrequency with which they're offered on eBay and the fact that there aren't many pictures of them suggests these are moderately rare machines. The open filigree artwork didn't lend itself to decals for restoration because the decal margins or edges would be too obvious to be ignored. Instead, a new high-definition stencil technique was used that enables complicated artwork to be applied directly to the machine's surface without needing the plastic backing decals use, which create the margins. This stenciling technique more accurately reproduces the look of the lithograph transfers that would have been originally used. I'm already filming a video showing how anyone can make and use this new technique and hope to have it uploaded soon. This crown was intended for use on a treadle. For display and hand crank use, it's mounted on this wood base, which, while it raises the machine high enough so the mechanics under the bed don't hit the tabletop, it does make the machine look a little bottom heavy. On a treadle, only the thin base would show, giving the machine a much lower profile. There is no hole in the flywheel for a handle. Instead of compromising the machine's originality by drilling one, I made this removable handle that uses a magnet to secure it to the machine, which by the way turns with the top going towards the sewer. At first glance, the crown's closed body design looks like many others, yet I find it's always catching my eye. Part of this is because of its unusual height and the fact that its shape brings to mind the stiff, at-attention attitude many people identify with upper-class Victorian England, even though this is an American machine. Also, the refined artwork and the fullers on the top and bottom edges of the horizontal arm add a note of grace and elegance lacking in many similar machines. Thread the machine by running the thread through the top tensioner. It's important that the inside surfaces are highly polished to avoid abrading the thread and to increase the adjustable range. It takes only small changes in the screw to create large changes in the tension. If the surfaces are rough, the tensioner becomes so sensitive that fine adjustments become difficult. Loop the thread through this guide and up through the slot in the top of the needle bar. Bring the thread down from the top of the needle bar, out and around the top of this wire guide, around the take-up arm, back out and around and down the bottom of the wire guide, and then down to the needle. Feed the thread through this diagonal thread guide at the bottom of the needle bar, and then thread the needle from left to right. I find Singer 127 by 1 or 20 by 1 needles work well in this machine. Once the bobbin's filled, drop it into the shuttle so that the thread comes off the top. Wind it out and through these two thread guides, over and out this thread guide, and down in between the side of the shuttle and this metal arc. Then close the bobbin keeper and you're ready to go. This screw right here will adjust the shuttle tension. Crowns are extremely reliable. I've yet to see this one drop a single stitch. They're whisper quiet and turn smoothly and easily. And as can be seen, produce an even tight stitch. Like most antique sewing machines, the crown has its share of interesting design features. For example, underneath this shallow nut are two felt washers. Oil dripped into the gap between the top of the nut and the needle bar drips down and soaks into these felt washers and acts as a reservoir to keep the needle bar lubricated for a long period of time. This small cup at the base of the needle bar catches any excess oil that happens to drip down the needle bar and prevents it from getting into the fabric. 
A close look at the very top of the standard that holds the spool shows that it's been stamped with a tiny number two. But what's most interesting is the serial number. While there are good records for connecting serial numbers from earlier Florence sewing machines to their dates of manufacture, these records stop by 1877. This suggests dating crowns may be impossible. However, a much closer look at the serial number shows that there are very small periods placed after the first one and the 81. I believe these periods are date separators, indicating that this machine was manufactured in the first month, January, of 1881. The three-digit number is the number of the machine made in that month of that year. If this is correct, then this was the eighth machine made in January of 1881. I would appreciate anyone who has a crown to share their machine's serial number in the comments section below. The more machines that can be documented, the better this theory can be validated or disproved. Crowns are great sewing machines and worthy of a place in any collection. Our next restoration is an 1880s Gulen Harbeck. I hope you'll come back to see how it turns out. Until then, thanks for watching.